I next want to talk a little bit about scatter. You know, we've talked about this really being due predominantly to those Compton interactions. Yes, there's a little bit of classic or Rayleigh or coherent scatter, as we call it. This reduces our image contrast. And a lot of imaging that we do, chest radiograph, pelvic radiograph, scatter to primary ratio. The number of detected x-rays that were scattered versus ones that were unscattered scatter to primary ratio it can be three to one, three times as many scattered as opposed to unscattered, or even six to one in, in kind of lateral abdominal or lateral lumbar spine imaging. So we always want to make sure we, we collimate, right? It reduces scatter because it reduces the volume of irradiated tissue. And if you irradiate less tissue, then those x-rays can't end up scattering back into your area of interest. It improves our image contrast, and it also ends up reducing the patient dose. So we always want to make sure we collimate, okay? Um, scatter is reduced at lower KVP. Uh, that's because there's an increase in the photoelectric interactions the lower the KVP is. But that's not always practical, right? When we're doing a lateral pelvis in an adult, it's not practical because we've at least got to get enough x-rays through them to make an image. And so in that case, if you go to a lower KV, the MA that you have to get is so high that the dose can uh, maybe be prohibitive. So here's that patient. Here's our scatter versus primary. There are all those scatters coming out. And I, I emphasize again that there's a lot of these here. Many fewer make it through the patient. Here I've shown a scatter to primary ratio hitting the screen that's closer to one to three, and I told you that the true number is actually closer to three to one, right? More scatters than primaries. There those are. That's what we're talking about. We're ignoring everything that was absorbed completely. We're ignoring everything that was backscattered and didn't end up hitting the, the detector or the, the film. So as I mentioned before, right, we're going to collimate. We're going to reduce that KV when it's at all possible. We may use an air gap and, gap. and the other thing I want to talk about is maybe using a grid. I want to make this point quickly, though. Here's, a, here's an example of where they use some different diameter phantoms, and they use different field of view sizes, where on that phantom they opened up the field of view to different sizes, and they looked at what the scatter to primary ratio was. So look at here. Here's a very small phantom, five centimeters. And it re even if the field of view got bigger, there really wasn't a whole lot of scatter. So again, right, pediatric patients, small parts, right? Scatter is not a huge issue there, and that's going to be important when we talk about grids in a second. Larger patients, getting our field of view size down as small as we can possibly get it to see the area of interest becomes very important to help keep that scatter to primary ratio down. Air gaps also reduce scatter. Does everyone see that if you move the object, the detector away from the object, you give room for some of these scatter events to escape and not strike the detector. So using an air gap can help. And that's why we don't use grids in magnification mammography, right? Because there's an air gap there that helps keep our scatter down. Grids are another way. Grids are very similar, if you will, to the collimator that's used in nuclear medicine, and I want you to keep that analogy in mind here. In nuclear medicine, we're actually going to use that collimator to focus, if you will, the, the um, gamma ray energy onto the camera. Here we're going to use it to reject scatter. So the holes are lined up specifically at a particular distance, at a particular angle, to the x-ray tube. So primaries that aren't changed in terms of their direction should pass through the holes. Yes, occasionally one of the primaries may strike one of the pieces of lead or whatever material it's made out of and not make it through too. So grids reduce the primaries as well as reducing the scatter. It's just that they reduce the scatter much more than they reduce the primaries. Okay, so our our overall ratio of scatter to primaries gets much better when we use a grid. And there's that grid ratio, the height of the holes divided by the width of the holes. As I mentioned, they decrease both primary and scatter, greater effect on those scatter. Longer and narrower the holes are, the more rejection they give, 
Grid's always require an increase in the number of x-rays, right? Because the number of x-rays that are going to hit the detector go down with the grid. So you've got to provide an increased dose to that patient. And the amount of increase in MAS that's required is referred to as the Bucky factor, right? And that's the, an increased dose to the patient there. We usually place the grids are in a little bit of a re reciprocating frame. They vibrate just a little bit. Not even, kind of almost the diameter of the whole width is how much they vibrate back and forth so that you don't see the pattern right on the radiograph when, when you look at it. So here's if um, the length of the holes divided by the width of the holes were 5, 8, and 12. Notice that holes here convert a 4 to 1 scatter to primary ratio to a 1 to 4 scatter to primary ratio. But the price paid is a need for a 5 times increase in the dose to the patient. All right. Here is a, a chest phantom done with the grid in place. Here's the same phantom done without the grid. And everybody sees the reduction in the contrast that's made because of all the additional scatter. For portable studies, stationary grids are used, and they have lower grid ratios um, and uh, moderate line density. And sometimes you see them, especially if they're not placed very well on the portable studies. I'm sure some of you have seen those artifacts. I'll show you an example there. We already mentioned that small parts, neonatal patients, don't require grids because there's minimal scatter to start with. We certainly don't want to put a grid in there, right? It'll be increased dose that we'll need and when we didn't need the, the grid in the first place. And then here's, here's one of those misaligned grids that you'll see sometimes. This, is, this one's really prominent. Sometimes they don't stand out quite 